Ever wondered how much undelivered emails cost your business? You might want to sit down for this because on average, businesses in the US lose a staggering $59.5 billion per year. But what is causing this financial damage? Regardless of the industry you're in, the average revenue per email is 11 cents. And for example, in the software industry, 2.7% of emails go to spam, while 8.2% are missing. In retail, the situation is even worse. And in finance and insurance, the situation is close to catastrophic. Yes, the numbers are mind-blowing, but let's talk solutions now. The only way to spend less money on undelivered emails is, naturally, to increase your email deliverability. But how do you actually do that? Let me introduce you to Konstantin von Hoffmann of Martech, an ex-news producer of NPR, and Oleksii Yanchuk, MailTrap's very own deliverability expert. The two shared valuable deliverability tips and tricks on Google Postmaster and tracking metrics, sticking to the new Google and Yahoo regulations, warming up your IP addresses, complying with GDPR regulations if you're from the EU. What are the issues that your clients are coming to you about? What are the common concerns? Uh, they, uh, from cases that they had about marketers, they usually came uh, when it's a bit too late. Then uh, some people don't know that even, uh, ex I know, that there is Google Plus Master, uh, they don't uh, use it. And then they just see uh, on the stars of their management tell them uh, uh, that, I know, some our emails don't perform well, uh, what's going on, and they're trying to dig in and they just miss that from the beginning. So they already have some damage reputation and then it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's even too late or like not too late, but it would be much, much more efforts to recover it, etc. But sometimes it's even too late and especially Postmaster uh, for Google is better to act as early as possible, maybe to post some activity to investigate, to check it uh, as uh, actually monitoring and kind of health check of your domain reputation of the campaigns is becoming, is becoming more and more important from my opinion because it's just we have those uh, stars and signals. It seems to me that these new regulations, I mean, uh, are are actually a boon to email marketers because it's it's requiring them to to follow best practices would you would you say that's true well yeah it just requires you to use the best practices so many people uh, were ignoring them and because they were allowed to do it and as they know it's everything is a human nature and it's not forbidden and it's allowed and uh, that's uh, and of course especially when you're talking about marketing uh, but as you get punished hard you have to play uh, by new rules and especially as uh, it's just the beginning actually it does warming up ip addresses help of course as uh, there are more signals that uh, domain uh, reputation uh, has more weight in durability during uh, last years. Still, IP reputation is uh, say, a significant factor in the durability. And uh, steady IP warming up, uh, say, is a must when you start, especially when you start sending from dedicated IP. And, but to, to do that, of course, you need to know that you to warm it up, your IP, you need to have a uh, kind of steady volume of emails not just sent to campaigns a month and it's well we recommend to have at least 200 uh, emails per month for the ip some recommendations vary from 100 to 300 we somewhere in the middle yeah but the main thing that it's and sometimes it's tricky with campaigns as uh, you need to do it uh, you want to send campaigns all in once uh so you, you you need to devote time and sometimes uh something from your side to make sure you warm up with uh, sending your if you're talking about just campaigns right to, to good uh recipients who will engage with your emails so let all that stick to your ip reputation typically the ip warm-up process um, starts with sending a small volume of emails increasing it over time what do I want? What do I like in my emails? And, and 
what you know what this stuff do i send to spam automatically you just need to take more time and think uh, more insightful from your users just to send uh something in time and i don't know if you purchased uh how i say a new refrigerator you don't need to get emails about uh, another refrigerators right right, uh, right because you already have that you just need to be i don't know smart and logical yeah and think that uh, that what people would say aha that's nice and say oh no it's 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 spam i i it's, it doesn't just waste i just wasted my 10 seconds opening that email so trying to deliver uh what people would be would be happy to read i'm not happy but at least you won't have that feeling that okay they still bombing me with some unrelevant information now the EU cares about its citizens and and comes up with regulations about oh, data privacy and thing like that that we can't mm -hmm. seem, to, seem to do here in the US. Are there particular things about deliverability that I need to know if I'm sending to what is it 300 some 30 million people in the EU? The GDPR requires uh, uh, totally like uh, opt-in. Uh, so your emails in you should be totally opt in uh, because if that it it will be some uh, not following the regulation. I would say it's uh, one of the biggest changes and mm -hmm. here uh, the biggest difference. Still, uh, as far as I remember, in the states you still can. Uh, it's not so. Yep. It's not so strict. No. Nope. Say. What about sales and engagement tools like Sales Loft? Are there, do they, do they hurt? Are there things you should take into consideration when using them? I'd say a tool is just a tool. It's just then it's how to use it. So you can use it uh, in different ways, and you just need to use it smartly because some of such engagement tools they usually uh, offer a cold outreach, and uh, right, actually cold outreach is treated as would say like de facto as spam uh, with, uh, with new regulation, etc. You need to be more picky about uh, whom you engage, when you engage, with what offer you engage. Okay. That's all my questions. Uh, your answers have been, have been great. Um, I always like to say when, pleasure. when any of you runs short, shorter than the time designated for it, it means that the answers have been good. To sum it up, don't forget to use Google Postmaster to keep track of the important metrics. Test your email deliverability. Stick to the new regulations imposed by Google and Yahoo. Be sure to warm up your IP addresses. Comply with GDPR regulations if you're from the EU. And that's all folks, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to improve your deliverability even further, I suggest you watching our other videos on the topic. Simply click here or here and I'll see you in the next one.